In this podcast, we'll be going over quantum mechanical model of atom. The learning objectives are to understand what's the current atomic model like and to understand what quantum numbers are and what do they tell us. So as you probably know from Bohr, um, the model that we had was um, that there are protons, neutrons inside the nucleus and electrons are moving around the nucleus in discrete orbits um, and as the electron is closest to the nucleus it is present in ground state or lowest energy orbit and as long as electrons move in, in one orbit it doesn't lose or gain energy but to jump to higher energy levels it needs to absorb energy and when an electron jumps from lower to higher energy higher to lower energy level, then it releases energy. Bohr could test his model within very high accuracy of the energy of electrons present in a certain orbit and also the energy released in grain during these transitions. But the shortcoming of the model was that Bohr's model only applied to very simple atoms like hydrogen which had one electron in it. There were further researches done. A lot of understanding of atomic structure came from study of interaction of matter with light because we understand the nature of light and by looking at the changes that were made in the, in the light's properties by interacting it with matter, we tried to study the nature of matter. And through various studies and many theories along the way, Erwin Schrodinger based his atomic model on the fact that particles can act as waves. It's called dual wave particle nature. And he said if electrons can act as waves, then electrons must obey wave equation as well. Any particle or any anything that has wave-like nature must obey wave equation and when he applied the wave equation to electron behaving as waves and solved that he came up with three functions and each of these functions correspond to a quantum number and each of these quantum number corresponds to a property of an electron like where is it present, how far is it from the nucleus, um, what kind of sublevel is it present and what does the orbital in which the electron is present looks like. So before I go deep into Schrodinger's atomic model I do want to go give you an overview of Schrodinger's atomic model and then we'll come back to quantum numbers in a little while. So in Schrodinger's model, just like Bohr's, there are energy levels and the closer you are to the nucleus of the atom, the lower the energy is and as the electron moves farther away from the nucleus, the energy increases. Now Bohr called these as orbits. Bohr did not have the term orbital in his atomic model. Schrodinger coined another term which is called orbitals and I'll come to orbitals in a second. But starting with energy levels, they are divided into what's called as sublevels. As you can guess that energy levels are broken up into sublevels and for Bohr models there were four sublevels S, P, D and F and these names come from the emission lines that he observed in his atomic model uh, while studying, while coming up with his atomic model, sharp, principal, diffused and fundamental. These refer to the atomic emission spectral lines. Then sublevels were further divided into orbitals and this is this can be a little confusing because there are SPDF sublevels and they are SPDF orbitals as well. Now the each of the orbital can have only two electrons. So S orbital can have two electrons. And S orbital looks spherical. P orbital looks like a dumbbell shaped 
but there are three different p orbitals oriented along x-axis called px, py, and pz. So each of these orbitals can have two electrons each. So how many maximum electrons can be present in p sublevel? Six electrons. d sublevel has five d orbitals in it, and d orbital shape gets like a double dumbbell shaped and they are different orientations and one of the shape looks like this. It gets rather complicated. You don't need to worry about it. You need to know that there are five different shapes of d orbitals present and if each orbital can take two electrons then how many do you have in all in d orbitals? Maximum of 10 electrons and f can have possible seven orientations so maximum electrons can be 14. So in S, you have only one orbital. So in S sublevel, there's only one orbital present, meaning maximum of two electrons can be present in S sublevel. In P sublevel, there are three P orbitals present. So in P sublevel, how many P orbitals you have? Three. And how many maximum electrons? C. Uh, six electrons. In D sublevel, you can have five orbitals. So how many maximum electrons? 10 electrons. And if, in F sublevel, you can have seven orbitals or 14 electrons in all. So that in general is the is overview of Schrodinger's wave mechanical model. I wanted to give you this overview so you have some idea in <clears throat> some idea of the 3D model of the current Schrodinger's model. Now going back to quantum numbers, when Schrodinger applied wave equation to electrons behaving as waves based on dual wave particle nature, he came up with three functions. Functions are kind of solutions to the wave equations. Those of you that have done stats will understand this. Each of the functions indicated a property of um, electron and the first function referred to what's called as principal quantum number. The second function was called as angular momentum quantum number. Third was called magnetic quantum number. QN for quantum number in short. And there was abbreviation for it. Lowercase n stood for principal quantum number. Angular momentum is called L. And magnetic is called ML. Now, what does print principal quantum number indicate? It tells you which energy level is the electron whose properties you're studying is present in. So energy levels could be one, two, three, four, and so on from the nucleus, right? So how do you figure out principal quantum number? You have to look at the electron position, which energy levels, and if you recall, the which period the electron, the atom is present in can determine what is the principal quantum number. And the second is angular momentum quantum number, and this indicate the sub-level or which orbital um, is the electron present in. More accurately, rather than sub-level, which orbital is the electron present in? S, P, D, or F. And we have a certain value of angular momentum quantum number assigned to each of these. The value of L for S orbital is 0, for P is 1, for D is 2, and F is 3. And anything above F, we haven't dis anything above the value of 3, we haven't discovered. However, scientists speculate that there might be more orbitals beyond S, P, D, F. But we don't have any conclusive research, so we don't give it any credibility at this point. Magnetic quantum number ML indicates the position of the orbitals. So how many different orientations are present? If you look at S orbital, which is spherical, 
there's only one orientation present. So if L is 0, then ML can have only one value which is 0. 0 in stats is not nothing, but it's a value. Similarly, P orbital, if you recall, can be oriented along x-axis or y or z. So there are three possible orientations possible. So for P, ML value can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. Each of these indicates an orientation of the orbital. Now the question is, how do you calculate these values? N, you figure out by looking at electron configuration. You do not calculate. For calculating n, the values are 0, 2, n minus 1, and everything in between. So 0 is a value, and then till n minus 1, you include all the values. So if n is equal to 1, then the only L possible value is 0. And that's how Schrodinger knew that in the first energy level, there's only s orbital. If n is equal to 2, meaning, so if I write here n is equal to 1, then L is 0, meaning there's only s orbital present in first energy level. If n is equal to 2, then what could be L's value? 0 to n minus 1, right? So it could be 0 or 1, meaning it could have s and p orbitals in it. Then in the third energy level, if L, if n is equal to 3, L could be 0, 1, or 2, meaning it could have s, p, or d orbitals. And n is equal to 4 onwards, L could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So from fourth energy level, you have s, p, d, and f orbitals present, and from n5, onwards, all four orbitals are present. This is how Schrodinger came up with the model of atom. Now, how do you calculate ML? The formula for calculating ML is negative L to 0 through positive L, and all the values in between. So if L is 0, then ML could only be 0. But if L is 1, then the values could be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. If L is 2, then the ML values could be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2, and so on. So this is an overview of quantum numbers and how do you calculate it. Now I do want to go over some of the animations because a lot of this stuff is 3D and it is very hard to describe this on a 2D medium. So I'm hoping that by showing you some animations you will have clearer image of what the current atomic model looks like and then we'll look at some of the practice problems for quantum numbers. So this is a pictorial representation of s orbital. So 1s is smaller, 2s is bigger, and 3s is even bigger. And there are nodes and, uh, and the dead regions inside. That's where the probability of finding electron is very low. So in quantum mechanical model, Schrodinger talks about electron cloud. Electron cloud is nothing but all the orbitals of an atom put together make an electron cloud. And generally, within an electron cloud, the probability of finding an electron at any point of time is greater than 90%. So Schrodinger's wave mechanical model is nothing but like bees buzzing around a beehive. So electrons are constantly going around the nucleus in this big cloud that's called electron cloud. And what's present inside the electron cloud? In the electron cloud, you have energy levels you have sublevels, you have orbitals, and within the orbitals are present electrons. So this is the uh, picture of s orbital, p orbitals, d orbitals, and f can get very complicated. You don't need to worry about them. Now, if s, p, d, f orbitals and sublevels are present, how do they actually look like, like in in real life. It's very hard for me to draw it here because these are 3D. To show them on a 2D medium is not doing justice to it. So we'll look at some of the animations here. So if you look at this app for iPhones or iPads, this right here could look what 
electron clouds look like. So here you can see there's a higher density region and lower density region. This is very different from the little ball stick models that you're used to drawing. So I wanted you to experience this. These are the orbitals present together. The blue generally shows the high electron density area and the red generally shows the low electron density area. So this is just to kind of create an image in your head of what 3D atomic model currently looks like. That is one of the websites. And the other one that I wanted you to see is, <clears throat> this is a good site where you can see, you can scroll down, see 1s orbital, then you can go to 2s and you'll see it's a little bit bigger than 1s, then you can see the shape of 2p and then you go to 3s now what do you notice 3s gets even bigger but it is spherical only one orientation possible 3p has three different orientation along x-axis y-axis and z-axis all that means is that's where electron probability is higher and then if you go to 3d you see five different orientations here of 3d and you can go to 4f and you can play around and see. So these are individual orbitals. How are these orbitals all arranged together in an atom? We just saw that picture of the electron cloud on that iPhone app. This is another great site, orbitals.com. And if you go to orbital viewer, it gives you this grand table. If m is equal to 0, for n is equal to 1, meaning for the orbital that's present in first energy level, L is equal to zero, meaning it is the S orbital. What does it look like? It looks spherical. So this is a grand table. You can download this and you can play around. You can slice it. You can look at electron density. So these are just some ideas where you can look at the 3D model of atom. So coming back to quantum numbers, there are there were three functions of the wave mechanical equ equation when it was solved for electrons which gave you the quantum number of n l and m but we know that there are four quantum numbers n l m l and s this fourth quantum number was added later did not come directly from solving the wave equation but it was added later to explain the spin of electrons so remember i had talked about an orbital having maximum of two electrons in it. So what happens, you have nucleus and around it electrons are moving. So electrons don't only move around nucleus but they also spin on the axis as they are moving. If an electron spins clockwise, we give the value of spin quantum number as plus half, it's arbitrarily assigned value. And if the electron's spinning counterclockwise, then we give it minus half value. Both the electrons within an orbital cannot have the same spin quantum number value because when they are spinning in opposite directions, they neutralize the electromagnetic field that's generated. If both are spinning in the same direction, then the atom will become unstable and fall apart. So those are the four quantum numbers and what they represent and how do we calculate them. Now the question is how do you apply this or what kind of problems will you get on quantum number? One type of problems that you get on quantum numbers is are, is this set of quantum numbers permissible for any atom, for any electron in any atom? So what you have to do is kind of look at it individually. So for the first is n. By convention, you always write n, l, ml, and then s. So f, if n is equal to 4, meaning electron is present in fourth energy level, could else value be 1? What does else value of 1 represent? It represents p orbital. Is p orbital present in fourth energy level? Answer is yes. So this is fine. This is fine. If l is 1, could ml be 2? How do you calculate ML? ML is negative L to positive L, including zero in between. So if L's value is one, ML's possible values could be negative one, zero, or positive one. So two values not possible, you'll say not permissible. That theoretically you can write it, but practically it's not possible to have these four values for an electron in an atom. 
Let's look at this one. This shows spin quantum number as zero. That cannot be. Spin quantum number could only have plus half or minus half values. So not permissible again. Now let's look at third set of values. If n is equal to 2, l could only be 0 to n minus 1. It's not permissible either. So this is one type of problems you can be asked on quantum numbers. The other type of problems could be write out the quantum number of um, an atom, right? It could be hydrogen, 1H1. So its electron is present in first energy level, right? It's valence electron. So n is equal to 1. What will be the value of L? L could only be 0 if n is 1. Remember, 0 to n minus 1. And ML could be negative L to positive L, including 0, so will be 0. And S you could write as plus half, or you could have written as minus half. Either would be fine. What if it was helium, and they asked you, 2H, 2H, 4, right? So they'll have to specify which electron are they talking about because helium's configuration is 1S2, right? So are they talking both electrons, one electron? And if nothing is asked, you'll write quantum numbers for both electrons. What will be the quantum number for first electron? N is equal to 1, L is equal to 0, ML is equal to 0, and S is equal to plus half. What will be the quantum number for second electron? N is equal to 1, L is equal to 0, ML is equal to 0, and S is equal to minus half. Hope this podcast gave you a good insight into what quantum numbers are and an overview of the Schrodinger's atomic model. I will continue on filling of orbitals and how do you assign electron configurations in the next podcast.